Hi guys, Tyler Ansman here from Tyler Ansman Performance. Today we're going to break down Chase Burns. So Chase Burns is one of the top collegiate arms in the country heading into next year. This past year he blew up as a reliever, and especially after his psycho K strut, as Pitching Ninja called it, against Southern Miss. At the beginning of the year he was a starter, but after struggling for a bit he was moved to the pen and was absolutely electric. He was a top 50 prospect heading into the 2021 MLB draft coming out of high school and was up to 99 miles per hour. During his freshman year, he was a co-national freshman of the year, a third team All-American and a freshman All-American. He's obviously a stud, but let's talk about how he creates his velocity. All right, so kind of the first thing that you're gonna see here when we get into this is this center of mass shift. All right, so we've talked about the center of mass shift before and kind of why that's important. But what we're looking at is a couple of things. So one is kind of shifting that primary force vector, all right, from being, you know, vertical uh, to being more horizontal kind of in the direction of uh, the plate, all right, or kind of pushing kind of towards second base, if anything. All right, and so what you're going to see is kind of when he gets towards peak leg lift, that belly button is moving forward. All right, so he's got a pretty good center of mass shift, kind of setting him up to produce force in that plane and in that direction. The other piece to this that's, that's you know, helpful from the center of mass shift is that we also kind of get this kinetic energy, kind of similarly to how you would with a depth jump, right? So when you like drop off a box, you hit the ground, and then we kind of jump up. And, and generally there's a height where you're gonna be able to jump higher hopping off the box than you would just with a typical counter movement jump, right? And so there's a couple things kind of playing into that, but the kinetic energy from falling is very helpful in terms of what it's doing to the connective tissue, the muscle tissue, and kind of the, the eccentric action that's occurring. So similar kind of effect here when we have that center of mass shift um, happening. But what we can see is then kind of as he's coming down, right, we get that center of mass shift can see kind of over here all right we're getting he's doing okay of kind of hinging into his hip um, not this isn't like a you know a, a perfectly kind of vertical um, shin angle here or anything not that we necessarily need it to be but what you're seeing is kind of this extended lead leg is kind of counterbalancing him and allowing him to kind of sit a little bit more into that hip than he might otherwise be able to um, and so we're kind of he's kind of searching for that that hinge as he comes down the mound. And we can see over here, he's doing a pretty good job of kind of holding that anchor in the ground. Um, reasonably kind of vertical shin, kind of holding that, that external rotation and abduction of the hip, all right? And then he's kind of doing a pretty good job. He goes into, right, eversion. You can see his foot starting to evert. He's kind of shifting it to the, um, the inside of that back foot, his weight. All right, and then we're gonna see him kind of rotating into foot strike. He does a pretty good job of kind of landing, a pretty full foot landing there. He's not sliding into the landing so much. I mean, we see a little bit of that, but nothing crazy. All right, and if we say kind of that's where he's bearing weight, all right, so that would be kind of front foot strike because we've seen that ankle kind of stiffen up. He gets into a pretty good position here, all right? Obviously, there, there are guys who kind of find um, deeper positions at foot strike than him. But one of the advantages that he has is he's 6'4", and he's got uh, a, a pretty impressive wingspan. So he's already kind of, you know, moving and, and kind of applying force to the ball over this kind of long um, arc of motion. So he doesn't need to find these, like, excessively deep positions um, that, you know, some of the smaller guys need to. We've kind of talked about this before when it comes to lever length. It's one of the big advantages that these guys have. Um, and so he, he does a pretty good job of getting there. He's getting a pretty good stretch on this pec. Um, we're getting a pretty good stretch, you know, kind of across this sling right here, all right, from his hip to his shoulder. Um, and then what's going to happen here is, is a little bit interesting in terms of what we, what we tend to see is we tend to see guys keep contact with the ground. Obviously, we're seeing his foot come off the ground, all right? <clears throat> this isn't the end of the world, and obviously he throws 102, so probably not something that we're going to put a whole lot of time into worrying about, but the reason that this tends to be a flag for some guys is that 
we, we this tends to mean that we're not kind of keeping that torso stacked over the back hip and that has implications for the lead leg and being able to kind of send energy up the chain into the torso and into the arm now what you'll see from him is that this is a pretty elite lead leg block all right so what we're looking for from the lead leg is that at foot strike right <clears throat> we're going to get into a pretty stable position and then from there, we're really not going to see any further flexion of the knee. And you can see he does, he stabilizes and then he reverses direction very quickly. So um, that's, that's pretty impressive in terms of the reactivity happening at the lead leg there. So this is why, you know, that back leg coming off the ground isn't a huge issue because we are, he is maintaining a pretty good torso stack and we are, he is sending energy kind of back up the chain there with that, with that impressive lead leg block. All right. So that's one of the really big things there. One of the other things that you're going to see here that he does at a very, very high level um, is that spinal whip. So what you can see here is we have pretty impressive um, kind of T-spine extension happening here as we're in that counter rotated position. And, and so what we're looking for, this is kind of this, this bow flex bow piece that Paul Nyman has talked about in terms of going from like basically at um, that peak leg kick, we have a little bit of kind of general flexion here. And then as we kind of head into foot strike, we see that we get to this position of, um, extension through the thoracic spine and then going into ball release, we're going to get back into some degree of flexion. And so he does a great job of sending that torso over that front hip as well, which isn't something that, that everybody can obviously do, but obviously this is a pretty elite kind of position at ball release, something you see from guys like Justin Berlander um, <clears throat> and guys along that who are well known for their lead leg block. This isn't a position that everybody's gonna need to get to, obviously, or even will be able to get to. Um, it's more a matter of how far do you have to go to kind of take slack out of the system and kind of send um, energy back up the chain and kind of maximize the return you're getting from that connective tissue. So our, our relatively stiffer movers aren't gonna to have to go quite as far. And then some of our looser movers, right? You'll see, I mean, Justin Berlander gets into some hyperextension at that lead leg. Um, and so you're not gonna see that from everybody, nor should we, it's, a, it's kind of an individualized thing, but obviously he gets to a, a pretty crazy spot there. But kind of going back to that bow flex blow, bow, what we're seeing is you can see the energy kind of moves through his spine like a wave, it's pretty wild. So pretty significant extension here, right? You can see his chest kind of puffing out there. That's thoracic extension that we're seeing. And then he's going through <clears throat> thoracic flexion again, kind of there at ball release. And so what we're gonna see when we get that thoracic extension, this kind of contributes to layback, right? There's, there's a few pieces that kind of contribute to layback. So there's the thoracic extension, there's the true glenohumeral external rotation, but then there's also um, the position of that scapula and its ability to, to kind of get into that posterior tilt. And so he does a very, very, very good job of using that spine as a whip. Um, that is not something that you're gonna see from a lot of guys. Um, so very, very impressive there. All right, so kind of heading into, into ball release, what do we see? So we see him kind of getting into the plane of torso rotation. So pretty solid there. We're doing a pretty good job of capturing that rot rotational energy from the torso. Um, <clears throat> so very, very good uh, in terms of that. We have a little bit of uh, kind of contralateral tilt here, um, not a problem. And generally what we're gonna see is, is with guys who are in this kind of arm slot that he is with that contralateral tilt, that contralateral tilt kind of helps um, improve the velocity of rotation as well. Um, and you can kind of see this in, in some interesting demonstrations. Um, on YouTube, but but yeah, contralateral tilt is, a, is an important piece when it comes to kind of uh, increasing the velocity of upper torso rotation. All right, so let's kind of talk about the arm action a little bit more. So we see when he gets to <clears throat> peak leg lift, we're going to get that handbrake as he's coming out of it. All right, we see a longer arm swing. All right, so we've kind of talked about this before as well, but um, you know, short and long arm actions, one or the other isn't inherently better or worse. It's kind of a matter of how does it fit with the rest of the delivery? Is it synced up with the lower body? Um, all of these kinds of things. So there can be reasons to kind of change 
um, one or the other, but it, you know, it's not like everybody should have a longer or shorter arm action. Um, you know, necessarily it's, it's kind of what works for that individual. So we can see he has a longer one and that's, you know, not a problem for him. Look, he, there's, there's kind of no breaks or hitches in that, which is one of the things that we're looking for. Very smooth kind of going into that kind of flip up and cocking position right and kind of moving all the way through there and so one of the things that you would look for is like if if we see hitches um, in the arm swing that can be a problem right because we're not capturing kind of that energy from the downswing going into flip up and carrying it through ball release so there could be um, you know more velocity on the table for guys who have hitches there but that's that's not the case with Chase Burns so he does a very good job with that with that longer arm swing that works for him and you can kind of see we're seeing kind of all of these kind of longer pieces here, right? So we got a bunch of glove side extension. We got some internal rotation kind of happening at the glove side. We're holding that torso closed and then going kind of into foot strike. We see that glove side kind of stop moving and firm up. Then we have this piece to kind of rotate around. Um, you know, it's, if he was, um, you know, five, five, and not the uh, pretty elite athlete that he seems to be, would this result in him throwing 102? Probably not, um, but obviously it works for all the things he has going on. So um, judging kind of by his body type and some of the other kind of things about him from high school that I've read, uh, he seems to be like a, a, pretty, a pretty twitchy, elastic guy. So, um, you know, kind of getting to not crazy, crazy positions works for him um, because he can create such high velocities of movement there all right but if he was a little bit smaller would that necessarily you know pay off the way it has you know potentially not but but obviously it works for him um so like i said we can see kind of the glove arm holding that torso closed we see potentially maybe a little bit early from the torso but certainly nothing crazy he does a pretty good job of holding that closed um not anything probably worth worrying about uh, but again, if, if he was, you know, not as good an athlete as he is, not as big as he is, some of these things might need to, to kind of be tweaked, but it works really, really well for him. Um, and obviously he's probably about to make a lot of money, uh, throwing a baseball. So, um, this is, this kind of brings us to the end of the, of the Chase Burns kind of mechanical analysis. Um, if you're interested in kind of getting your own mechanical analysis done, we, we will happily help you with that. Uh, feel free to kind of contact us through the website. Um, all the information will be kind of below this video. If you have questions, feel free to leave a comment um, or free, feel free to reach out. Um, looking forward to, to working with some of you guys. Um, thanks for watching. Check us out with the next video.